Welcome to the next part of our structural fire engineering course looking at fire severity and fire resistance. We're going to be doing a worked example working out time equivalence. So to take a Eurocode parametric curve and then convert it into an equivalent standard fire rating. Now this is the question we're looking at for the fire compartment of the building shown in the following slide. We have previously done the first two parts of this question. So refer to a previous video where we generate the time temperature curve. So we had a parametric curve with a time temperature behavior and then uh, we plotted the curve against a standard fire curve and now we are going to determine the equivalent rating. So here is the uh, enclosure. We've got two doors and 12 windows and various parameters. As I said, refer to the previous video which covers this example in more depth. And uh, our floor area is 150 square meters. We've got 31 square meters of window and a total boundary area of 500 square meters. So that's wall, floor and roof together, not excluding the window or well, the ventilation area. So it's the total boundary area. So now here is the parametric curve and the, the line in black. Now if you have a look at that and just looking at the black line, what sort of equivalency do you think if you would get? Just looking at just sort of approximating the behavior. Now initially it's a little bit higher than the standard fire curve and then stops, starts dropping. So you probably just if you take kind of the area under the curves, you could thumbs like, yeah, maybe it would be 40, 45 minutes because we're going to lose some area on top and then below there's a bit extra. But the area under the curve, that just gives us a very rough approximation because it's not a good way of um, making sure that exposures are the same because it's linked to heat flux and gas temperatures and all sorts of things. But yeah, ballpark roughly, you can see somewhere around 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. You could sort of expect a result in that area, and that, that would be reasonable. Less than 25, 30 minutes, I mean, the curve, the parametric curve is above the, the standard curve the entire time until after about, what's it, 20, yeah, about 27 minutes or so. Now, um, we're going to be using the Eurocode formula, the time equivalence in the EN1991-1-2 code. And just some, some limitations to the equation we're going to be used are listed here based upon the annex. So this is a quote directly from the Eurocode annex. The following approach may be used when the design of the members is based on tabulated data or other simplified rules related to the standard fire exposure. Note the method given in this annex is material dependent. It is not applicable to composite steel and concrete or timber constructions. If fire low densities are specified without specific consideration of the combustion behavior, and there's some discussions in Annex E, then this approach should be limited to fire compartments with mainly cellulosic type fire load. So you shouldn't be using it for petrochemical fires. And here is our equation. So we've got a time equivalent. So <clears throat> that's an equivalent um, standard fire rating. And that is based upon the design fuel load, which we have calculated previously. And then this is <clears throat> adjusted by certain factors to account for boundary conditions, ventilation, and the type of construction used. And this is a value in minutes. So as I said, Q subscript um, fire for the design, the design value of the fire load density related to the surface area of the floor, not the boundary, the, the floor. Then we've got a ventilation factor, which takes into account the height of the compartment and ventilation and um, vertical and horizontal ventilation. And uh, the vertical vent ratio, so that's the vertical vents. Um, it's just a ratio of the vent area to the total floor area. And then we've got a horizontal floor vent ratio. So that's roof ventilation. Just be careful though, because the Eurocode parametric fires actually state that the calculations we did in the previous example are not suitable for a horizontal roof then. So you've got to be a little bit careful if you do events because you're applying it to a parametric curve which is not suitable for roof then. So just take cognizance of that. And then we've got a vertical opening factor and you'll once again see that this is quite an empirical factor to adjust. So this is based upon testing and some curves have been fitted. So you always should be cautious of applying uh, empirical equations without understanding where they come from. We've got a KC, a correction factor, which is a function of the material. Um, 
composing structural cross-section and defined as uh, if you've got one for reinforced concrete and protected steel and then if it's not protected steel you've got a a function of the ventilation area O. So we need to adjust our equation using those. Then there's also a CIB from CIB, uh, the W14 formula, and the equivalent time is similar to that based upon a adjustment factor, ventilation factor, and then the fuel load, where there's also a ventilation factor calculated, same as above, but they're just a slightly different form. And the factors to put in that KB, in the Eurocode and KC in the CIBW14 formula are listed here for either high thermal inertia, low thermal inertia, and, and general um, value. If, if in doubt, you use the general values, which you can see is on the conservative side, obviously. And it doesn't specify exactly how to interpolate between this, but I've just taken somewhere the upper bound and lower bound. So if I have a value of a thousand, I'll interpolate between 720 and 2500 to get a value in between. You don't necessarily have to do that, um, but at least you get a sliding scale. So now coming to the equation, this is the answer to the question above to determine the equivalent fuel load. So Kc is one, so we're assuming using protected steel. If we were using um, something different, we'd have possibly have to adjust this if it was unprotected steel. And then our Kb, so this is Eurocode, from the value above, I've interpolated it using a thermal inertia of that. And that was calculated in the previous uh, video. Horizontal factors, so we've got... 31 square meters over 150 square meters of floor area. Um, sorry, just going back. And then we've got no roof vents, a vertical opening factor, and uh, calculating vents areas because it's a four meter high boundary, and we have a ventilation factor of SUF, fire load as previously calculated, plugging that in, and we get to a time of 23 minutes. Now you'll see in our, just looking at the graph earlier, you can see that's probably on the low side. Uh, we were expecting 30, maybe 40 minutes, but yeah, this is, this is on the low side, but it's based upon an a whole bunch of equations above, very empirical. So you could see you would have a different result depending on how you calculated it, whether you were using temperatures and materials or area under graph. There's different ways you get different answers. But let's have a look at the CIB equation. We get our KC value from interpolation using the same thermal inertia value, ventilation area, and we get our thermal, I mean, equivalent standard fire exposure. And that comes in at 37.8 minutes. So now this is closer to what we expected. This, if we look at the fire exposure and compare the graphs, it seems reasonable, but obviously you'll find, depending on the shape of the time temperature curve, the fuel loads, ventilation, various other factors, you may have a better or worse fit. So just to be careful, just have a look at some um, cautions. The time, time equivalence formula have been empirical derived for specific design fires and room sizes. So uh, researchers have done a whole bunch of tests and fitted curves based on this, and focused on protected steel members. So this has been specifically developed to convert the, a real fire into a equivalent standard fire rating to see whether a protected steel member would uh, be so suitable. But in different materials, they may not be suitable, and they may not be suitable for large rooms where the fire dynamics behavior is different. Different time temperature curves than those which where they were developed from. So if we have longer, cooler fires or shorter, hotter fires, they may be less accurate. Other types of protection than sort of used in the experimental test, and other structural materials. And even a concrete section, for instance, if we've got a concrete um, beam here with rebar in the top and rebar in the bottom. The temperature, let's say, if it's governed by the temperature of my bars, that is heavily influenced by the distance of the concrete section. So that's my concrete beam. How far is that from the edge? That's going to be a very different equation and a different behavior to a I-beam with protective equip uh, material around it. So we have to really take some caution in applying these equivalent formula um, blindly to sections. For protected steel members, yeah, okay, it's, it's allowed. Um, but be very cautious beyond that and saying that this is a definitive 
um, equivalent resistance based upon specific design scenarios. So that takes us through our example, just looking at equivalent times for a specific parametric fire and what it would look like as a standard fire.